Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you rejoicing for your awesome presence brings us fullness of joy. Bless our Bible study today. Like Moses, we pray, teach us to number our day. Thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit, our great teacher of the Word of God. We receive from you knowledge, understanding, 
wisdom and the revelation of Jesus Christ. To you, Almighty God, be the glory and honor. Amen and amen. Greetings, my friends from Evangel Assembly of God, Durham, North Carolina, USA. Thank God for technology. We can gather online for another Wednesday English Bible study. This is Brother Marlon Lim, your fellow student of the Word of God. Today, we are going to have part two, the last part of Teach Us to Number Our Days. If you missed the first part, just go to YouTube Evangel Life. You might as well watch or review our other videos and share it to others. God will richly reward you for promoting and spreading the Word of God. Let us now read together aloud our main text in Psalms 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In the first part of our Bible study on Teach Us to Number Our Days, we learned that life in the world is short and temporal, so we must spend each day wisely. Now we are going to focus on the second part of Psalms chapter 90, verse 12. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The first part of the verse shows the action of the sentence. Teach us to number our days. The second part of the verse shows the purpose, intended result, or effect of the action that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The word apply in Hebrew means go in, come in. So let me cite three wonderful Bible translations of Psalm 90 verse 12, which gives further light to the meaning of this prayer verse. So read aloud with me and let faith come to us by hearing and by hearing by the Word of God. From the New American Standard Bible, it says, So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. The New King James Version says, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The New Living Translation teaches us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. In short, Moses was praying to God for a heart of wisdom. The simple definition of wisdom is, wisdom is the appropriate application of knowledge. There is an explosion of knowledge with the present modern age of internet and social media. Without wisdom or proper use of the vast knowledge before us, we will have knowledge overload and lots of wasted time on our computers, tablets, and cell phones. We need to pray like Moses for a heart of wisdom. A heart of wisdom is a heart filled with Jesus. In the end, wisdom is more than the appropriate application of knowledge. Wisdom is the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Verses 23 to 24, it says, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews 
a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Our desire for a heart of wisdom is to have a close relationship with Jesus, who is the fullness of God's wisdom. We desire to receive the anointing of wisdom and to know, think, and act with the mind of Christ, the mind of God. So know that life in Christ Jesus is eternal. And secondly, spend each day in the light of eternity. Let me illustrate. Here is a rope. And this rope represents eternal life. This small portion here that's colored orange is the temporal life where people, the lost, are concentrating most of their time. They work so hard, they fight, they argue, and only, only for this portion, for this life that is temporal. But they never thought about the eternal life that the Lord is offering. When we talk about life, we are talking about eternity. That means to say it's unlimited. It is where time does not exist. It is forever. Amen. Another example is the volcano that I have visited. You know, the most active volcano in central Philippines is the Canlaon volcano, and it has erupted 30 times since 1819. And it was reported only last month of June 24, 2020, that there have been 136 earthquakes in just one day. In the 1980s, I had the chance to visit Hacienda La, La Carlota that was located near the volcano Canlaon. I saw a view of farmers working so hard planting rice. At the same time, I saw the Canlaon volcano at the background behind them and the Lord showed me that people are preparing only for this life that is temporal they work so hard they sacrifice only for that this life that is temporal and they never give thought about eternity they are not preparing for the life that is eternal. So we must let go of this world and intense desire for things of this world. This world is passing away. It's dying. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 16 to 17 of the Berean Bible study, it says, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. The world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. Let us do the will of God. Take hold of eternal life. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called 
and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Lay hold means to take a hold of something without letting go. Take hold of eternal life means living consciously and intentionally for Christ and giving priority to relationships and matters of eternal value. God has planned, expressed, and in fact has written well laid out best plans for its day of our lives. In Psalms 139 verse 16, and I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible, it says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All my days were written in your book and ordained for me before one of them came to me. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, from the New International Version, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So how do we get hold of God's plan for us for its day? We number our days as one Hebrew word for number is mana. It means to prepare and appoint its day. It means that we are not just to watch and wait passively, wait to see what our days will bring. So the song, Que Sera, Sera, is definitely not wise and not applicable to us believers. You see, there are four kinds of people in this world. People who wait for things to happen. People who watch things happen. People who don't know what is or why is it happening. There are people who make things happen. Where are you? We have the responsibility to prepare and appoint ahead our days by prayer. We appoint our days with God to bring out the best of its day. We submit and consecrate its day for the purposes of God. In Proverbs 16 verse 9, Berean Study Bible, it says that a man's heart plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. In Psalms chapter 37 verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his ways. So let me conclude our Bible study with these two true-to-life stories. First, let me illustrate the importance of numbering our days and having a heart of wisdom with my own experience. In the assisted living facility where my, where my wife and I live, we have the fire drill at least once a year. Each one of us is responsible to look after one fellow resident to see to it that in case of fire, that person safely gets out of the building. Besides that, my wife and I also volunteer to knock on doors of the apartments on our floor to warn our fellow residents, shouting, Fire! Fire! So people prepare for fires in buildings or houses. What about preparing against fire of hell? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Verses 3 to 4, again from the Berean Study Bible, it says, For our appeal does not arise from deceit or 
ulterior motives or trickery. Instead, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, not in order to please men, but God who examines our hearts. Consider this spiritual truth. Some good people of God prayed for us and shared to us the gospel, the good news of salvation. Now, what do we do with that gospel entrusted to us in this lost and dying world? When we go home to heaven, we will not see their things we have in this world. It is possible though, it is up to us to see our loved ones, friends, and even strangers whom we care to share the love and word of salvation of Jesus Christ. The only thing we can take with us to heaven is the souls of our family, friends, and all the thousands of people that are waiting for us to tell them about Jesus. Finally, here is the testimony of the late Pastor Jimmy Warren. Pastor Jimmy Warren was a Baptist minister, church planter, and missionary for more than 50 years. He mostly led smaller rural churches, but he was also a skilled carpenter. One of his favorite mission activities was to construct churches overseas. In his lifetime, he built over 150 church buildings all around the world, on every continent. Pastor Rick Warren, Pastor Jimmy's son, shared the touching story of his father's passing away. Pastor Jimmy had cancer, and when it reached its final stages, he was brought to his daughter's house where he received hospice care. On the night before he died, Pastor Jimmy did something that surprised everyone. Rick, his wife Kay, and their niece had been sitting attentively by his bedside. He was in a dreamlike state, and he became very agitated and started to try to get out of bed. Jimmy, you can't get out of bed, Kay said. Whatever you need, we will get it for you. But he kept trying to get up and they, they keep insisting that he remain in bed. Jimmy, you are sick and you are weak. But Jimmy could barely stand up and his body had wasted away due to the ravages of the disease and the fact that he had stopped eating. Just tell us what you need, they insisted. Undeterred, the dying patriarch kept trying to get out of bed. Finally, Kay's voice developed a stern tone and she said, Jimmy, you're dying. You can't get out of bed. Whatever you need, just tell us and we'll be glad to give it to you. What he said next stunned them all. I've got to save one more for Jesus. I've got to save one more for Jesus. Pastor Jimmy began 
to repeat this phrase over and over. He must have said it over 100 times. One more for Jesus. Reach one more for Jesus. Save one more for Jesus. Moved by the extraordinary testimony, Pastor Rick knelt down by his father's bed with tears running down his cheeks. I was thanking God for the heritage of a father like that. I bowed my head and thanked God for my father. Then, like the biblical patriarch Jacob, Pastor Jimmy offered his final blessing. My dad reached up his hands, very frail, and he puts them on my head like a blessing, and he said, Reach one more for Jesus. One more for Jesus. One more for Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we are forever grateful for your love, mercy, and grace that you have saved us from sins, death, and hell. Teach us to number our days so we will have hearts of wisdom, hearts full of Jesus. Teach us to be good stewards of the eternal life you have given us and of the gospel you have entrusted to us. Let our hearts cry each day, more of Jesus, one more souls for Jesus, more of Jesus, one more soul for Jesus. Be lifted up and be glorified each day of our lives. Amen. So let us sing our final song. Open your eyes to the world all around you. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. This world is much more than the things that surround you. Must arise and open your eyes. Sometimes when you're easy to share, but Jesus wants us to care, to care. Open your arms to the naked and shivering. Open your arms, open your arms. We need a little less taken. Given. We're so safe and warm, we can open our arms. Love a little bit stronger, pray a little bit longer, longer. Jesus says, when we love someone, in His name we're loving Him. Jesus says, when we touch someone, in His name we're touching Him. We need to show them the light, we've got to pour out our lives, our lives. Open your hearts to the ones who are desperate. souls are worth it. the life you impart when you open your heart Jesus loves all men the same you got to go out in his name in his name Jesus says when we touch someone in his name we're touching him 
Jesus says When we love someone In his name we're loving here Jesus says When we feed someone In his name we're feeding him Jesus says When we reach someone In his name it's all for him Jesus says, Jesus says, mm -hmm. Jesus says, Jesus says, mm -hmm. 